Exploring severe scoliosis. In order to be diagnosed with scoliosis, certain parameters must be met. And the first thing is there has to be an unnatural sideways curvature of the spine has to have developed. And this spinal curvature needs to have a rotational component, meaning it's normally rotating into the concavity of the curvature, making it a true three-dimensional problem. When we measure the Cobb angle, it needs to be 10 degrees or greater for it to be officially a diagnosis of scoliosis. Now, a Cobb angle is known as the gold standard of assessment of scoliosis, and this is how they use to measure a scoliosis. And this is taken off an x-ray, and normally it's done on a scoliosis x-ray, which is a full spine x-ray. Now, some x-rays can actually be smaller x-rays that are stitched together called a stitched x-ray, but by far the best way is a one full x-ray, like one x-ray of the entire spine. And the way the measurement's taken, it's taken by drawing lines from the most tilted vertebrae on the top of the curve to the most tilted vertebrae on the bottom of the curve. And these curves are intersecting normally at the apex of the curvature, and this intersection creates an angle in degrees. This angle is something that we call the Cobb angle, and this tells us how large or how severe the scoliosis and allows us to classify the scoliosis in, term, in terms of its severity. Mild scoliosis cases are cases that have this Cobb angle me measurement between 10 and 25 degrees, and this is where we call mild scoliosis. Now, where a scoliosis is diagnosed doesn't necessarily mean where it's going to end. We know scoliosis can progress over time. So all mild curves have the chance of becoming more severe, and all severe curves were once mild. So people don't just instantly develop a severe scoliosis. They have to, it happens as a, a, during time. Moderate scoliosis is what the common angle of measurement is between 25 and 40 degrees. And then 40 degrees or greater is where we consider curves to be considered to become severe. And I like to use a fourth category called very severe scoliosis, which is 80 degrees plus. Now this severe range where, where, patient, where curves go from moderate to severe, there's a little bit of a gray area here. So we say 40 degrees or greater, but some doctors will say 45 degrees. Some other doctors will say 50 degrees to become severe. Some countries have different numbers associated with curves cross this severe threshold. The United States, it's somewhere between 40 and 50. Um, countries like Brazil, did it's more like 35 to 45. Some countries in Europe are like 50 to 55. So there's a little bit of a gray area here. And the reason why, because when curves become severe is when they start considering surgery as an option. And since surgery has so much risk associated with it, we have to wait for curves to become severe in order for them to, to consider surgery as a treatment option. So that's why there's this range. Now, how bad can scoliosis actually become? Now, we know scoliosis is progressive, like I mentioned. All mild curves have the potential to become moderate. All moderate scoliosis have the potential to become severe, and all severe have the potential to become very, very severe. Where a scoliosis is diagnosed at the time when it's first found is no indication of where it's going to stay. In fact, the majority of cases are going to progress. They're going to progress in one of two areas. They're normally going to progress rapidly during growth. If they don't do that, which we hope they don't, they can also progress very slowly in the adult stage and start to accelerate as patients get older. But one way or the other, the curve is more likely going to progress over time. So where this curve is initially found is nowhere near where it's going to stay. So the goal should be is to stop mild curves from ever becoming moderate, moderate curves from ever becoming severe, and severe curves from becoming very severe. In fact, we know in the adult stage that the larger the curve is, the more likely it is to progress in the adult stage, and the, the larger the, and the more likely it is to cause pain and problems. So the goal should not be not just to keep curves from becoming very severe or severe to curve. The goal should be to keep curves as low as possible because the smaller the curve you have, the less likely curves are going to cause problem. Only proactive treatments can really counteract this, this progressive nature of scoliosis. And you think that would be, since that's the goal, you think the goal with every patient should be is let's keep curves as small as possible. Unfortunately, that's not the goal in most traditional treatment options. The, most tradi the goal is typically do nothing until it becomes severe. So unfortunately, the most common patient I see has a severe scoliosis already because they've done exactly what their traditional doctors have told them to do. They've done nothing, their curves have progressed, and now they're looking at a severe scoliosis. Now they're told they need surgery, and now they're looking for an alternative because they don't want to go through the risks of it. So what are some symptoms associated with severe scoliosis? Well, uh, in the adult, the most common uh, symptom is 
back pain. It's pain in the area of the curve. This can be in the low back or the mid back, and this is a result of the, the curve progressing as a result of gravity over time. Because the spine is compressing, compressing on nerves, which can lead to back pain, you also can feel radicular pain th felt throughout the body, most commonly into the, le into the legs and feet. It can also ha happen in the arms if the scoliosis is higher. Um, we can have hip pain, we can have knee pain, we can have, you know, these types of pains are typically normally associated with adults. However, in children, the most common symptom of severe scoliosis is a postural deviation associated by the curve progressing. Kids normally do not feel pain as a result of scoliosis. The most severe scoliosis I've ever seen in a child has been 155 degrees, and this child had no pain, nothing. Had severe posture distortion, but no pain, and was functional, was able to do almost any other what any other kid could do. So the posture deviation is the number one symptom associated with severe scoliosis. Typically, uneven shoulders, uneven hips, development of rib arches that you can see in the back or in the front, tilted pelvis, uneven waistline, arms and legs that appear to hang to different lengths. A very short torso could be a very common sign of a severe scoliosis. Their arms and legs seem longer than the rest of their body. Like they don't really match very well. Prominent leans or tilts to one side or the other and changes in gait and balance and coordination. So most of the things that we see in a severe scoliosis in a child is normally what we see visually. Now, like I mentioned, the treatment options for severe scoliosis are, are very, very risky, and meaning that there's only really one treatment option when a patient becomes severe in traditional treatment approaches. Now, I like to discuss treatment approaches in two main types of categories. Traditional treatment approaches are what's, known, what's traditionally been done for years in terms of treating scoliosis, and conservative treatment approaches. And conservative treatment approaches are trying to keep patients away from the most severe or the most risky type of traditional treatment, which is called surgery. Traditional treatment approaches typically are no treatment, nothing really to try to reduce the curve until the curve becomes severe. And then at that point, we hope they, they elect or they offer spinal surgery as being the option to try to treat the scoliosis to try to make it spine straighter. And this involves using spinal uh, pedicle screws, spinal rods, and surgery to help fuse the spine together. Now, in the in a growing child, they do that surgery relatively quickly once they hit this stage because they're concerned about future progression. Now, interesting, in the adult patient, if an adult patient hits this severe number, you know, 45, 50 degrees or greater, an adult patient is not so prone to do these surgeries because the outcome is much less predictable in this early, I mean, within the first five years. There's a much more higher incidence or a much higher incidence of there being a negative outcome. And then as patients become older, the risk of this surgery becomes greater. So in children, they do surgery relatively quickly because they recover and they do well for the first five, 10, 15 years even though we have no idea what happens to patients after that. There's never been long-term studies in terms of what happens to people 25, 30, 40, 50 years post spinal fusion. And you're looking at 12-year-old, 13-year-old uh, patients having this spinal fusion done and not knowing what's going to be happening to when they're 60 or 65 in terms of with this, this surgical intervention. But with adult patients, they're not so prone to do it because the prognosis is so poor immediately following this surgery. So therefore, they normally will only do the surgery. Two things have to happen. they got to have a severe scoliosis, and they have to be in a dire situation, meaning they have, have severe pain, severe problems going on where the risk of surgery outweighs how bad they're doing. Right Now, conservative treatment options are very different. We combine chiropractic care, we in-office therapy and rehabilitation, corrective bracing, customized prescribed home exercises, and the goal is to prevent progression the minute we see it. And the way to prevent progression is to make the curve smaller. And if we make the curve smaller, we can influence how much the curve progresses in the adolescent stage, and we can also influence how much the curve progresses in the adult stage because smaller curves progress less as a response to gravity. So regardless of the severity of your scoliosis, we recommend treating scoliosis as soon as possible because this can, we can prevent invasive surgery in the future if curves, we can stop curves from progressing um, in, this, in these stages. At Scoliosis Reduction Center, we offer conservative treatment that works in preventing progression. But more importantly, even if you really have a severe scoliosis, many cases we can reduce curves to either below surgical threshold or very close to that. Because if we can reduce your curve to a smaller number, we can prevent progression over time. 
Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.